Hi there, Chris from Totally EV, and here I'm joined with Jamo. What's going on, people? <laughs> so we have got the beautiful Honda E behind us, hey. which is also owned by Jamo. And we're going to be talking about the EV owner experience. And so, yeah, you are polishing it because you've got a bunch of stickers, which I have no idea what that's all about. They are go faster stickers, man. That's the only way to get that turbo boost, bro. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the EV ownership experience, yeah, all yeah. about uh, the Honda E as well, because you've actually shoved just shy of 40,000 miles on it. 40,000 miles on a car that literally stretches to get to 100 miles of range <laughs> on a full charge i don't know how but we're there man we're there so we're going to talk about everything range included charging yeah, yeah. And everything like that some of you guys have asked about it in the past and so we've got someone which i would deem as an expert um and someone who actually owns a honda e which is great so anyway we're going to jump into the cabin and talk about it so we're in the cabin now and jamo's driving yep 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 <laughs> so one of the first questions I had, yeah. actually, I think I remember we were up at a press event together. Yes. And I asked you, why have you got the Honda E? Or why why did you it? choose it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you were like, well, I quite like the design of it, the tech of it. So is that still the case or? I think for those um, specific things, the design, the tech, definitely. Like on the way I was driving here today, um, I literally a taxi driver was like, Where's your mirrors, mate? <laughs> it's I have no mirrors, mate. It's cameras, it's state of the art kind of thing. That's what we're doing. Um, yeah, it's just so futuristic. And as a techie person, I'm just like, form over functionality in this case, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks, I mean, just from my, because it's been like almost like three years since I've been in the Honda E. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It still looks absolutely incredible. Like, Thank you. The tech and everything, <laughs> and obviously the side cameras, which are always in operation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you get used to the cameras towards the side? Do you know what? I feel it's so weird when I go into a car that doesn't have cameras. Because <laughs> you get quite a good um, field of view with the yeah, cameras. Yeah, yeah. Um, even to a point of where I was like, oh, I'm surprised that they actually had a lot of thought into this and thought, oh, let's put wide angle cameras there. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like they're, they're very useful and obviously in like, lots of different weather conditions, even at night. Yeah. I'm surprised that the frame rate and the ISO can still give you quite a decent enough image for you to be able to see where cars are kind of thing around you. You know, that's something I never thought about. Mm. That's actually a really yeah. good point. Because I, I never thought about it either. Because at night, how will the cameras cope in comparison to looking exactly. at regular mirrors? Especially when they have bright lights coming from the back. Yeah. And um, they've got to try and cope with all of that. It's almost like it's a HDR kind of yeah. thing going on. <laughs> like glare. But yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, so you chose the Honda E yeah. based on the fact that it suit your kind of personality like you love tech yeah yeah the design of it <laughs> i mean the design is so unique it's so nice different i absolutely man. love it very different um but then why did you choose it over other evs did you look at other evs did you yeah so i looked at that time there wasn't a lot going on i think the renault zoe was going on um and that had twice the mileage right. but just giving it a drive i was just I was a bit bored. There was no, the yeah, there was yeah. no jeune sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the Doctor Sixty was like one second slower, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't really matter. Yeah. But yeah, there was no camera mirrors, and I think at that time they were quite competitively priced. I think yeah. the Renault Zoe was maybe twenty six, and this one was about twenty eight. Yeah, one or two grand cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Exactly so right. I was like, oh, might as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, did you consider mm. a non EV? Or a hybrid or anything so like that? So I traded up from a Smart 4.4. Oh, okay. Um, 65 plate, which I loved. It was bright yellow, <laughs> manual. Um, suits your glasses. So yeah, suits my glasses. <laughs> and it was a 0 0.9 turbo. Love it. <laughs> and I ensured it had the same stickers, go faster stickers on it. I ensured that people knew that it was a 0 0.9 turbo. <laughs> you know, not just an average 0 0.9. <laughs> Gotta be specific on a turbo. Literally, but um, yeah, I was just trying to save money really okay. and get something flashy at the same time. And when I looked at, um, cause my little one lives in Nottingham. Yeah. When I looked at the petrol I was paying to go to Nottingham and for the car, and I was like, well, I can just get an EV, pay three pound petrol, three pound electric at, yeah. at the time. At the time, yeah. I was like, yeah, it's a win-win. <laughs> I'll be saving money. But then that brings me on to my next question. Mm. What about range? Getting up to nothing. Oh my surely. gosh. So I literally have to charge three times to do a 300 mile round trip. Okay. Um, once when I go into Milton Keynes, mm -hmm. which is about 80 miles, 
and then once again when I get to Nottingham and then on the way back I charge again at Milton Keynes okay. and then I'm able to get into London and I find that that's the case whether it's winter or summer no matter if I'm getting more mileage in the summer as well right. so yeah it's just always the case that I have to charge at those stops and so on charging then how have you found the EV charge specifically coming from the mm. smart yeah is it been something that you've had to like get accustomed to um, um, I guess like, obviously you have to get accustomed to it but I mean is yeah. it something that you has kind of not say put you off but reminded you oh when I was on a petrol car yeah I just presume it was petrol yeah yeah it was petrol, petrol um, yeah. yeah I needed um smart car I think as a techie kind of person I'm always here for troubleshooting in terms of charging electric cars seeing how to do it and I kind of didn't mind adapting yeah. to how charging is in terms of um it being a lot slower than putting some petrol into the car kind of thing yeah. um so i didn't mind that kind of <laughs> going from that petrol to electric but in the long term oh, it's a whole different ball game in terms of how you now need to plan your journeys yeah. before you take them essentially because you need to know that there are uh, there are charges on the way essentially there are um, stops on the way kind of thing otherwise there's no petrol to save you <laughs> exactly yeah yeah, because yeah. You, you, you can't you can't refuel quick no no you can't refuel quick and there's less electric charging stations than there are petrol stations essentially and so you've had this car for how many years um it's a 20 plate and we're in 23 now so yeah 20 about, about three years yeah three years yeah and then how have you found with the ev adoption do you feel like it's gone do you feel like it's increased decreased as in like in terms of like the ev charging points um do you feel that now they're a lot more crowded given there's a lot more push towards evs oh. or they were getting crowded at one point, but what's also happened um, is I found that EV charging, public EV charging, well, all EV charging, essentially electricity in itself has gotten way more expensive. Yeah. So that's kind of decrowded them at, you know, the moment, but it's also, they're, they're really expensive now. So it's kind of like, do we really want to go to a public charger where it's cheaper to charge at home? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the situation at the moment for me, really. And then, so then can you, so can you charge at home? Um, so I can charge at home. Okay, that's um, good. I charge on a granny charger, so it's like a free kilowatt, which will charge this car overnight, I'd say about 12 hours, 15 hours kind of thing. Okay. And then, yeah. and what about in terms of servicing and maintenance? So you've actually got a really good video yeah. on your channel where you've covered a lot of like your EV owner ex experience as well, like yeah, from yeah, owning yeah, yeah. the Honda E. But that was almost a year ago since you made that. Have you had yeah. to do any sort of servicing on the Honda E? Um, so servicing, I pay, oh, I can't remember how much. I think it may have been included in my PCP. Okay. Um, but I can see it's £800 to renew the service plan. Okay. Um, which gives me five services. So that's, yeah, five years worth of servicing or every... Every 12k miles, I believe. Okay. Every 12k or 13k miles that I can, I can bring it in to get it serviced, essentially. Okay. So, because I'm at 39k now, I think I've serviced it three times so far. Okay. Um, and yeah, they just they usually do it within about three hours. I'm not sure what they do to the car. Um, I have asked them to come and can I film what they're doing with the service, but they've not allowed me. Um, Honda needs to change that. Honda, you need to Yeah, change. literally. I'm pretty sure they don't do anything. <laughs> Maybe they clean up the air ducts, the air vents kind of thing. But yeah, that's about it. So you, yeah, so you don't, so it, because that's the thing with regular cars, as in regular cars, like mm. IC based cars, there is a servicing that is often, you have to often think about it. And, I guess you know when you got this car new if you yeah. bought a petrol car new you probably wouldn't have to service it that much but mm. given the fact that you've pretty much had to do nothing other obviously you've been part of the service plan yeah but i think that's one of the you know benefits of evs oh definitely you, you, there's less moving parts less to worry less about to go wrong i mean obviously you've got the regular things that's like brakes tires yeah i've gone through four pairs of tires in 40k miles okay one each right okay. yeah yeah so not, not too bad that's not too bad yeah. um obviously it's a rear wheel drive so the rear, <laughs> rear tires went first <laughs> um for a lot of um heavy footed um pedaling it seems that's good that's really good to hear in terms of servicing and do you think long term yeah that you'd be keeping this car then i think 
solely because of the fact that they haven't made an upgrade yet. Okay. Um, and it fits into my needs at the moment. Yeah. I think I'll be keeping this car um, beyond its like PCP contract kind of thing. Yeah. Um, just obviously because of the quirks of the car itself, but it hasn't given me any issues apart from one, um, which we kind of discussed briefly earlier about the battery. Yeah. Um, well, I was essentially saying that when you leave the car in standby mode essentially which means that you've gotten into the car but you've not engaged the the, mo the main motor that drives the car the little 12V battery that's at the front of the car that's in normal ICE vehicles powers the car and powers your um, uh, entertainment display on yeah, all yeah. electronics yeah. and it can do that for about 25 minutes to 30 minutes before it completely shuts off and you need that battery to start the car. <laughs> it's so backwards thinking. Yeah, it's but crazy. It's, and you'd think, like, for example, <laughs> given it's so tech-centric, yeah, yeah, yeah. that you might have, I don't know, let's say you've got a gate, you were saying like you can plug in, you've got HDMI port, you can plug in yeah, your yeah. Like, Nintendo Switch or Literally. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then after half an hour, it'll fire <laughs> it, it will go. So it's just like... Something you don't see in the marketing brochure. You do not see that in the marketing. <laughs> I think even Honda themselves were like, what's going on? So it's like... Even though I had full battery or near enough full battery, I had to be jump started. Wow. <laughs> it's not good in this. I thought I left that lifestyle behind. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so you think like the main battery. So that, yeah. I think I, re I remember seeing that question once on the channel. Mm. Someone said, how does it work with my regular battery? Well, actually, the regular battery still exists. It still yeah. does all the things that, it's as so you said. That it does, yeah. Why don't they just rely on the, the lithium ion battery, the battery, which is massive, to, to at least give a generator of, of sorts yeah. to the smaller I, I think it does do maybe a generator of sorts I'm not sure if it's a friction generator or whether it just trickles from the main big battery right but I don't know <laughs> well we'll have to ask Honda for that one yeah literally if they'll even give that information I'm not sure well <laughs> so then okay so another question then yeah. for you um, one thing I've seen pop up is insurance costs. Ah, yes, 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 so, yes. So, obviously you came from the smart car, so mm. I presume that even though it was a, a turbo. Yeah, yeah, turbo. <laughs> <laughs> even though it was a turbo, the, the, the price of that insurance, yeah. how did that compare to the Honda E? Obviously it's, it's a bit different because you're comparing like a relatively you, well, older car versus yeah, yeah, a 65 brand new plate. car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did insurance... Do you know what? It was like for like. I was really? very surprised, and that's one of the other things that encouraged my impulse buying this car. I was like, oh, I could definitely afford the PCP, but I was like, what about that insurance? What's going to happen? And when I looked on um, the insurance comparison website, and it was like, yeah, yeah, same price. I was like, that's really good. I was like, what's going on here? That Obviously, is. insurance itself has gone up, but um, yeah, like for like. That is incredible because, yeah, that's normally not the case, isn't it? It's nah. like you'd, you'd think um, at least a new car, yeah. let alone a fully electric car, yeah, yeah, yeah. would be more expensive. Definitely. Like, um, even, oh, was it Tesla I wanted to go for? Yeah. And the insurance on that was triple. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was triple like, the Honda? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like, um, because wow. I think at the time I was paying £60 for the smart car. Yeah. Um, whereas, and yeah, but it was like 65 for the Honda. Yeah. Whereas the Tesla, when I was checking it, oh, you're indicating that. No, you can go. He's good. <laughs> um, yeah, whereas the Tesla, when I was checking it, was about £180 a month, £200 a month. Okay, wow. <laughs> that's a massive jump. Literally, I was like, okay, well, that's out of the question, definitely. It's funny, it's not the first time I've heard that. Someone mm. said that to me as well about, um, they were looking at the Vauxhall Corsa E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Tesla Model 3. Yeah. And obviously, they're a bit different class of vehicles and the mm. price of the cars, but then it was something like triple to quadruple the price. Yeah. And actually, there's another one. Um, um, Someone else I know went for the BMW i4 M50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like a 60 odd grand car. Mm. And they compared it to the Tesla Model 3 Long Range, which yeah. at the time was about 40K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the insurance on the Tesla was more expensive than the BMW. And I wonder if that's because they have got more reference points, the insurance providers. Do you reckon? Because BMW's been around for longer, Honda's mm -hmm. been around for longer. It's easier to, more, more likely to be easier to fix the car, I guess. Exactly. I guess. Service centers, mm. parts, whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there's a Tesla as, yeah, we, there as, we, go. as we speak. <laughs> speak of the devil. And there's another one. There we go. Hey, <laughs> how much are they paying for insurance? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but, it, but anyway, mm. for you, that's yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. So that's for really me, good. insurance has not been a 
issue in terms of where I came from on the spot. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, definitely. That is fantastic. That's really good to hear. So it makes it even more appealing. Yeah. And then yeah, when the cost of the car when you looked at it, as you said, it's like twenty seven, twenty eight. Now, I actually looked, and I think you know already what, yeah. what I'm going to say. The car, this car now costs a whopping thirty seven thousand pounds. Thirty seven. So knowing all of that, yeah, would you buy the Honda E? If it was 37k no way there's no there's absolutely <laughs> no i say that <laughs> but I've, I've already bought it at a ridiculous price yeah um at 37 and there's no they haven't increased the mileage as, as far, far as, as i'm aware. aware as far as i'm aware they haven't increased the battery they, the motor or nothing they updated anything i all. don't i i don't think so i could be wrong yeah i, I don't i'm i'm sure as far as we know anyway yeah from a brief um, look on on Google and on obviously Honda's UK's website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks the same. It looks the same. Uh, and they it looks like they still give the two different trims. Trims, yeah. Although actually, it was the advanced model that only popped up. So it could be. Oh. But sometimes they have stock issues. Sometimes it's yeah, that they, yeah. on the configurator you won't have the a certain trim. But if you went to a dealer, you would be you able to get able that. To trim. get one if they have one yeah. in stock. Yeah. But yeah, thirty-seven k. So you would. As well. So you wouldn't get it if it was thirty-seven k. Nah, thirty-seven. <laughs> that is that is steep. <laughs> that is. I do like to play games in the car, but like, ugh. Is it worth thirty-seven k? That is. Nah, I think with two hundred miles range, um, maybe not to sixty five seconds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then you've you've got me. But at that price, you could. Um, I mean, alternatively, I'd probably go for like an Ionic five. Yeah. Um. Oh. There's Kia EV6 as well. Kia EV6 as well. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that price point, there's another little hatchback I can't remember what it's called. Um. I mean, not, if, uh, Skoda people. I will say the the Fiat 500 is a great little car. Fiat 500. Yeah, that's got quite a good electric, bit of yeah. um, mileage actually because yeah, the lightweight. And the yeah, of roughly 140 to 160 miles tested. Yeah, yeah, by yeah. By myself, yeah, yeah. but oh. yes, yeah, so that was these. I really like the Honda. Uh, the, the Honda the I, I really like the Fiat 500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, speaking about the Honda, actually, I really love the fact that there's more more rear-wheel drive vehicles now. Yeah. I know you touched upon it before, but there's more rear-wheel drive electric vehicles now. Specifically, like for example, from the Volkswagen Group. Yeah. The ID3, ID4, 5. Yeah. The upcoming vehicles either they're all-wheel drive or they have um, rear-wheel drive. And when it comes to driving fun, mm -hmm. you talked about it before, but you need to have a real. <laughs> it's all about rear-wheel drive. Or maybe all-wheel all -wheel drive. drive. Yeah, all-wheel drive as well. Yeah. They launch quite well. They do, yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, yeah, it would be as we said. Oh, Cooper Born is another one. Yeah, again, that's yeah, yeah. similar to the ID3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes it's, of course. It's, it's, yeah. it's um, copy and paste. Same thing, yeah. Just, with a Cooper Born, but it looks nicer. And weirdly enough, mm. when I reviewed the Cooper Born, yeah, it was slightly cheaper than the ID3. Same oh, spec. Oh, weird. And I think that's because Cooper are trying to enter, well, enter the UK market and therefore yes. appeal more yeah, yeah, yeah. in comparison to Volkswagen, which is mm -hmm. renowned. Exactly, which saying, is a more known brand. I think Golf is like probably one of the most popular cars in in, in the UK. Uh, VW Golf. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Whereas Cooper, no one's heard of it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. At the time, now I think mm -hmm. they've got a bit more brand awareness. But still, I think last time I checked, the the price of the Cooper Born was still cheaper than the ID3. Yeah. And yeah, it's the same car, just more stylish, at least subjective. There you go. But yeah, if you want to check out Jamal's channel, it'll be down description below. Um, definitely check it out. I'll pin it in the comments as well. Uh, check out these things. You do tech, yeah, tech. And, and cars, and cars and stuff. I'm gonna try and separate it. Okay. But um, yeah, tech, cars and video game stuff. Love which, my video games. Which is awesome. Yeah. It's good little selection, and obviously follow him on social media as well. He's pretty much across all platforms. Yeah, it's tech jammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, check it out, and um, thanks a lot for coming over and nice one for talking about your EV experience and being so honest and transparent about it, you know oh so, yeah honesty is the best policy <laughs> exactly so yeah there we go so if you've liked this video and want to see more or want to see more from Jamo himself definitely do drop a like subscribe and um, yeah we'll hopefully see you in the next one take nice care one. of yourselves bye see ya